Hi students, uh, good morning. In the last class, we discussed about uh, applications of uh, Gauss law, like some calculations based on the flux calculations when some charge distributions were given. So in all those problems, just we need to calculate some Q inside. So if you are able to calculate the Q inside, you can solve the, you can find the flux passing through that. So let us uh, continue some more examples based on that, some more problems based on that. So in that term, uh, I am taking a case like let's say a circular ring let us consider I means this is a circular that means this one is imaginary sphere through the center of the imaginary sphere of radius or an imaginary ring is passing here So let's suppose the center of this uh, circle will be here. So this is a ring of uh, having this linear charge density lambda here on this. Or let us take a charge Q is distributed totally on this. So write that as a problem. A charge Q is distributed uniformly. A charge Q is distributed uniformly on a circular ring of radius r on a circular ring of radius r this ring is assumed to be passing through this ring is assumed to be passing through the center of an imaginary sphere center of an imaginary sphere of same radius r as shown in figure as shown in the figure then what is the flux passing through the imaginary sphere then what is the flux passing through the imaginary sphere that means both the radius are same only so then center of this uh, this is the center of the sphere let us cancel this is the sphere we are taking and this is a ring and so now this uh, circle is circular ring is passing through the center of the sphere then automatically the center of the ring should lie on the surface of this uh, sphere right because both are having that same radius and so just we need to calculate the flux passing through this imaginary sphere and we solved so many problems like in order to calculate the flux passing through that imaginary sphere so we need to take just what is the charge enclosed by this so that means from here to here clearly that is the charge present inside this so this how much charge is present inside this hemisphere we need to calculate here so that is the thing we need to do here and so for that uh, you can use any any concepts here like whatever you know by seeing just by seeing the diagram so just i am taking like this this radius will be or from center of the sphere to the surface of the sphere I am taking or you may consider from center of the ring to the surface this C1 is the center of the sphere and C2 is the center of this ring from the center of the ring I am drawing this another line to the surface of the ring until this point here right then you can say that that should also be radius R only right next from the center of this uh, uh, sphere I am drawing a line to its surface so this is also radius r only right so that means now this is radius r this is radius r from uh, center of the sphere to the surface of the sphere and this is from the center of the ring to the surface of the ring so this is also r so that means this is an equal triangle so that you can write this angle as 60 degrees right similarly let us form another triangle below this so that means just uh, similar to that we can draw, draw one line here and another line here so this is also r and this is also r so that this angle is also 60 degrees and so that now if you are taking this as a arc here this is circular arc at the center of the circle this circular arc is subtend an angle of 120 60 plus 60 and so that we can write that as charge enclosed will be equal to Q by 120 degrees means you can write that as 
one third because total it is 360 degrees the charge q is distributed in an angle of total 360 degrees so it is one third or in terms of charge per unit length you can write here that means in terms of charge per unit length you can write this as lambda is equal to i can write this as q by 2 pi r we can write that is lambda value then this charge enclosed we can write as q by 2 pi r into length of the torque we need to write length of the torque we can write as 2 pi by 3 into r because r theta formula this total angle is 120 degrees so 120 degrees means i can write as 2 pi by 3 into r that gives the length of this arc so charge per unit length into length of this part or directly you can write that as total 360 degrees so 120 degrees means it is one third so one third of the charge will remains inside therefore this will be q by 3 you can write here and therefore flux passing through that surface we can write as 1 by epsilon naught times q in and therefore it is q by 3 epsilon naught we can write so it is a flux passing through that so such a simple type of questions will be there just you need to calculate that by using the given information you need to calculate that what is the charge enclosed by the surface if you are able to calculate the charge enclosed by the surface then you can calculate automatically this uh, flux passing through the given surface like suppose sometimes they will give the situations like this In this is a cone uh, for example it is considered here cone of this base radius r and say height h now it is placed in uniform electric field of intensity e here this cone is placed in a uniform electric field of intensity then what is the flux passing through that uh, cone that means flux entering that cone you may consider what is the flux entering that cone so write that as the next question a cone of height h and a base radius r is placed in uniform electric field of intensity e is placed in uniform electric field of intensity e as shown in the two cases then what is the flux passing through the flux entering the cone then what is the flux entering the cone in both the cases so that means in one case the cone is placed like vertically now it is placed like this so that the flux is entering through the base of this cone here and so now here uh, uh, for example if i can set this case here the flux entering the cone is nothing but I can take the projection of this cone in two dimensional then whatever the area is there then whatever the uh, area that two dimensional area you are getting then flux passing through that area will be the flux entering this cone we can consider here that means the two dimensional projection of this cone is nothing but I can consider it as in case one The two dimensional projection is nothing but a cone like this that means triangular like this this is a triangle of height h and a base 2r that means this area we need to consider perpendicular to this uh, electric field here if electric field lines are like this then the triangle will be like this triangular will lying in this plane here then electric field will be like this then whatever the area of the triangle is here through that area this electric flux is entering here so that we can cancel like this that we call the projection of this given diagram so whatever the three dimensional diagram is given such a projection we need to cancel there and the projection concept we use it in fluid mechanics do you remember that we use it that uh, projection concept in fluid mechanics when you are calculating the horizontal component of force due to the static fluid 
And so now similarly we are using such a concept here. And so now the area of this projection we can write it. This is a projection of the cone. So projection of cone we are considering like this. And therefore this flux we can write as uh, flux entering the cone we can write as phi is equal to E into A we can write. That means cos 0 we can cancel here. Just we are uh, considering like that. And so that uh, flux passing through this triangular surface we need to write here. E into I can write this as area as 1 by 2 into 2R into Oh, sorry, 2R into H and so that this flux is you can write this as E into R into H you can write here. So it is a flux passing through that cone and whereas similarly if you are taking this example uh, in this case if you consider here. So similarly let us take the projection. Projection of that cone will be projection of cone in second case. So simply you can cancel that whatever the flux entering this base of the cone that flux only will pass through that cone here and so that we can write as that means area of that flux we can write it as E into A. So then E into that area of the cone we can write as pi r square. Just here you will get projection of the cone as like this. That means you will get this as a circular disk here. Circular disk of radius r then E into pi r square. You may place the cone in reverse order. That means you may place the cone like this. In the electric field for example, if the cone is placed like this. In this case also, the flux will be same only. Even if the cone is placed like this, in that case also the flux we can write as E into pi r square. That means the projection of that will be again you will get the base of the cone only. The disk, the disk at the base of the cone only you will get. So in that case also you can write this as E into pi r square. There is a flux entering that uh, cone here. That means just we are taking that what is the flux passing. Passing in the sense here what is entering that uh, cube we are, we are calculating here. So there is a flux uh, flux passing through that. We need to take uh, just a projection of that. So if your play, uh, cone is placed like this then we can write flux passing through that cone we can write as E into uh, R into H. If it is placed like this we can write it as E into pi R square we can write here. And such a lot of questions will be there. Just we need to take such a projections there in such a cases. Like sometimes uh, they will give like a curved surface they will give here. And here they will give some, this is a circle of radius R. And this may be any surface. It may be hemispherical surface or it may be any paraboloid surface. Whatever may be the surface or the instead of this hemisphere hemispherical surface, I am taking some paraboloid surface like this. So even then its base is a circle for example I am taking here. Even if it is placed in an electric field like this, uniform electric field of intensity E. So then flux passing through that uh, we can write it as E into pi r square we need to write here. So that is a flux passing through that cone here. So in for example, particularly they will asking about what is the flux passing through the plane surface and what is the flux passing through the curved surface. Then you need to write the proper sign also. In the previous case or this case, I am not considering about the sign. Just we are calculating the magnitude then. If particularly if they are asking what is the flux passing through the uh, curved surface in this case and what is the flux passing through this uh, cone surface if they ask for example. Then we need to use our previous uh, problems. in the. Uh, just after the completion of the gas law statement, we solved some problems there. The total flux is nothing but we need to write like flux through the plane surface plus flux through the curved surface. So in this case also it is placed in uniform electric field, so it will be zero. So that concept we need to use here. If they are asking particularly about flux passing through the curved surface or flux passing through the plane surface. Otherwise if just they are asking the flux passing through the given surface, then we can directly write its magnitude like this. Right? So for example in this case if I consider then flux passing through the plane surface will be minus you will get because area vector will be this side and electric field is this side then minus E into pi r square you will get then flux passing through the curved surface will be plus of uh, E into pi r square you will get because their sum should be equal to zero because no charge is enclosed by this curved surface here. 
So like that we need to answer that according to that given question. Whether they are asking through the curved surface particularly or through the plane surface particularly or just so they are asking flux passing through the given surface. So accordingly we need to answer those questions there. So this is a projection method. And here one sometimes one more method is required to calculate the flux. That is by constructing a complete uh, diagram. By constructing a complete diagram is that model also actually we discussed it already like if you are taking this hemisphere, uh, hemispherical surface. So at the center of this hemispherical surface if you are placing a charge. So in this we already discussed that we need to take the charge belongs to that hemisphere as Q by 2, right? So why we are taking that as Q by 2 means we imagine a complete sphere here. So we imagine a complete sphere. So that flux passing through the sphere will be equal to Q by epsilon naught we can write. As this charge is uh, symmetrical for both the hemispheres. So flux passing through the hemisphere we are writing as Q by 2 epsilon naught. Right? So that is why we are taking the charge belongs to that hemisphere as Q by 2 uh, we are taking there. So such a similar problem is there. So let us see this. That means we, we are constructing a complete diagram here. When only a part of diagram is given for us. So we need to imagine a complete diagram. From that you can do the calculation, flux calculations easily. Suppose now here a point charge is placed like this. Now this is a uh, plane of uh, square this is square plane A of side A. Now a charge Q is placed here. A point charge Q is placed above the center at a distance of A by 2. Got it? Now we need to write the flux passing through the plane of uh, that square. So write that as the next problem. A point charge Q a point charge Q is placed above the center of a square above the center of a square at a distance A by 2 from the center at a distance A by 2 from the center where A is the side of this square where A is the side of this square. Then find flux passing through the square. Then find flux passing through the square. So if you want to calculate this flux calculation by integral of E bar dot DA bar. Because electric field is changing, for example, if I take an element here, the electric field is changing as well as angle is also changing here. So, it's a lengthy calculation. If you are using that integration method, integral of E bar dot dr bar. So, instead of that, we use a Gauss law. And in that Gauss law also, we are going to use a construction method. That means to take the complete diagram. So, this is a part of diagram is given for us, a square in the sense. So, if you are, com if you are making it as a complete diagram, then such that the charge given charge will becomes a, a point inside the given diagram inside the diagram and then you can write the flux passing through that uh, a total object we can write from that the given part you can calculate here so just by observing that let us identify that how to cancel that problem now how to take it as a complete diagram so just it is given that it's a square and for that square uh, it's a side is a and we are placing a charge above the center here now what I am going to do is, I am constructing a complete cube with the side A. So if I am completing a cube here, for example, so this is a cube I am going to construct here, got it? Now that becomes a cube. And so now for that cube, as a side, this distance is A. Now the side of this cube will be A. And our charge is placed at the center, center of the cube. Therefore, you can write that as F 
ఫ్లక్స్ టు ది క్యూబ్ ఈస్ ఈక్వల్ టు ఇస్ ద నెట్ ఫ్లక్స్ క్యూ బై ఎప్సలా నాట్ వీ కెన్ రైట్ బికాస్ నౌ దట్ చార్జ్ క్యూ ఈస్ కంప్లీట్లీ ఎన్క్లోజ్ బై దట్ హెమిస్ఫియర్ దట్ క్యూబ్ నౌ ఫ్లక్స్ పాస్ ఇన్ త్రూ ద ఈచ్ ఫేస్ So, flux passing through each phase is nothing but, that is nothing but our flux passing through the given square here. That is our required value. So, as the charge is present at the center, so we can write it as 1 by 6 times that of the net flux. Right? Because that charge, that flux uh, will be symmetrically distributed among all the 6 phases there. Therefore, I can write this as flux, uh, flux passing through that given square, we can write it as Q by 6 epsilon naught. See here how this how simple this problem is if you are taking such a construction method if you are complete if you are constructing the complete diagram if you are using a integration method for this it's a very lengthy method a very lengthy calculation you will get here for this particularly for this square uh, problem so that means if you are using such a construction method when only that such a plane surfaces or such a half of the diagrams are given for us so we need to complete we need to construct the complete diagram so that you will get the flux calculations will be easy for us so all this is one type of calculations here and next year uh, in some calculations uh, in some problems uh, we need to use that uh, solid angle if you are using the solid angle concept we can solve some problems easily so just i will explain the definition of the solid angle and from that we will solve some problems there now So I think you know all of you that solid angle definition uh, in the first topic generally we will define that basic definition of the solid angle. So solid angle. So plane angle all of you know we define in a plane the angle made by the circular arc at its center we can define that is length of the arc by radius we can define there. That's a plane angle and its unit is we know radian. Now the generalization of that uh, plane angle in three dimensional is nothing but we call solid angle. That means this solid angle is defined in three dimensional. It is a generalization of that plane angle in 3D. So plane angle is defined only for a plane. That means in two dimensional. Now this solid angle means we define in three dimensional here. So like if suppose if I am taking a small part of a hemisphere, a small part of a spherical surface. Like suppose this is a complete sphere here, or let us take a complete sphere. So in that complete sphere, I am taking a small point like this, a DA. Now angle subtended by that small element uh, at its center, small area element. Now that's area, it's not arc, it is an area at its center. So that this angle, a three dimensional angle. So that angle is nothing but we called a solid angle. We represent with that uh, d omega or we may write a solid angle means we represent like this, this omega and this is all let us consider. And so now mathematically it is defined as now. So mathematically the solid angle is defined as so solid angle this d omega is equal to da by area of that element by square of the radius. Like plane angle we are defining as length of the arc by radius we are defining right and so now the solid angle is defined as area the ratio of area of the element to square of that uh, radius and so now its a unit will be steradian so it is a unit of this uh, solid angle so just write the definition solid angle solid angle is defined in three dimensional is in 3d in 3d it is defined as the ratio of it is defined as the ratio of area of the small element to the ratio of area of the small element to square of the radius 
square of the radius. Square of the radius of the sphere of which this element is a part. Square of the radius you can leave, but clearly radius means it is not the radius of the element. It is the radius of the sphere of which this element is a part. So that radius we are taking there. So it's a radius of the element of which, sorry, radius of the sphere of which this element is a part. So that is uh, d omega is equal to dA by R square. So then its unit will be radian. It's a dimensionless quantity. You know the plane angle and solid angle are dimensionless quantities. And so just we are the unit, uh, unit we are giving here, the SI unit will be radian. And so if there are certain cases like if that area is not perpendicular to this radius uh, here, like for example, I am taking like uh, if the area is like this, if the dA is like this, then you can define that angle as this d omega as according to this we can define here, right, dA by R square we can write. If suppose that area is not like that, now let us see here, instead of this, I am taking this area element like this. This area I am taking like this, such that uh, it is not normal to this, it makes certain angle here. This is a normal here there. Now this dA is making certain angle theta here. That means we are taking area element as like this. Small area element we are taking like this which makes an angle theta with this normal here. Right? So in that case just we need to take the projection of that. So projection of that means you will get a now perpendicular area you will get here. This element you will get here. So now that element you can take that as dA cos theta you will get here. Because here this angle you will get theta. And so that element will be dA cos theta. So that means in that case the solid angle we, def we can define it as, so solid angle we can define it as d omega is equal to dA cos theta by r square we need to write here. This distance we consider it as r. So that means when that area is making certain angle theta with the normal, then we need to take that component of that dA cos theta, normal component we need to define there. Then in such a case, we define that solid angle as dA cos theta by R square. This much, in, uh, don't confuse with that, much information is not required. Just we derive one relation between solid angle and the plane angle of the, uh, in case of a cone, semi vertex of uh, angle of the cone. And only that relation is required for us. Now, if you are taking for any complete uh, object, for complete three dimensional object if you are taking, then the solid angle we need to write here. For example, let us take in case of a sphere itself. So let us write this, this is just a definition for this small elements here. So the solid angle of a complete sphere, solid angle of a complete sphere so that I can write that as integral of d omega simply that omega is equal to so which I can write as integral of dA by R square right so in case of a sphere like previous our cos theta term that, that value will be zero you will get because this area will be normal only if we draw a line from the center it will be normal to that only so that theta value will be zero there and so now here this value I can write as 1 by R square for example I am taking this as a sphere now so for sphere so that r is a constant value, so I am writing that as r square outside. So this will be dA you can write here, right? So then this value will be sigma is equal to 1 by r square into this area of the, the dA is nothing but we need to add such a small elemental area of the sphere there. Then you will get the complete area of the sphere. So complete area of the sphere means then we can write that complete area as 4 pi r square, right? Therefore, this uh, complete solid angle will be 4 pi steradians.
So that means complete solid angle of the sphere will be 4 pi psi radians. So here you should note that complete solid angle of uh, any three dimensional object will be 4 pi only will get. Not only for the sphere, it may be of any shape, it may be some irregular shape also. The complete solid angle will be 4 pi only will get. For the sphere we can prove simply like this. Otherwise, if you are taking any such a irregular object, then some lengthy calculations will be included there because theta value may vary and area of the different elements may vary. And so there's some lengthy calculation will be there. The total calculation is not required for us. So let us conclude here. So the solid angle of uh, the complete solid angle of any object will be 4 pi only. So mention that point there. The complete solid angle of any three dimensional closed object will be three dimensional 3D. So, the complete solid angle of uh, this is steradian. So, the complete solid angle of any three dimensional closed object we can write as it is 4 pi steradian. It is not only for the sphere, sphere we, are, we can prove easily like this. So, it's actually for any object you will get 4 pi only. So, that's an important uh, point there. Now, see the uh, our required relation. That means our required relation regarding the solid angle here. Relation between solid angle and the semi vertex angle of a cone. Relation between solid angle and semi vertex angle vertex angle of a cone you know vertex angle means semi vertex angle means it is it uh, it is like a two dimensional uh, angle that means a plane angle and solid angle relation in one way we can say like that so now for this what i am taking is i am assuming a object And this relation will be uh, used in this optics lesson also. So, in the when we are discussing the optics, I will explain this. That relation, that final relation. Right. Now, this is a cone here of a radius, base radius, suppose a smaller I am taking here. Now this is a solid angle here you will get in three dimensional. So that solid angle and the semi vertex angle means suppose I am taking this uh, semi vertex angle as theta. So we are going to write this uh, relation between that solid angle and the semi vertex angle here right. So that so for that what we need to do is we need to use our solid angle definition. So let us use the solid angle definition now. Solid angle is nothing but ratio of area of the element by the square of that radius we need to write. So now here we need to write the ratio of that means the area of this element we need to write. Area of that element means it is like the above the it is a part of a sphere above that cone. Above that cone means exactly if I want to say if you are taking like a ball ice cream if you are taking a ball ice cream above that cap will be there right. So that area we need to calculate here such a part we need to calculate here above the cone means above this cone you will get such a part of a sphere spherical so that area we need to calculate here got it what area we are going to calculate that area by square of this radius that gives our solid angle here so that gives our final relation between solid angle and the plane angle so the area is clear just if you take a ball ice cream so then um, for the ball ice cream cap will be there so that area of the cap we are going to calculate here that means that becomes area of the part of a sphere which is above this cone here. So for that let us see this calculation. 
I am drawing this part, uh, some larger uh, part here. So I will represent this cone as a just a plane here. Just I am representing like this so that you can cancel the small element easily. So actually it will be like this only. Just to take a small element and then for the integration I am taking that I am drawing this separately like this. Right? And so now here I am taking a small element here. This angle is theta and this is d theta I am taking here. And so that area of this small circle will be smaller you will get. That means in that uh, small cap we are taking a small element like this. So this element we are taking here. Got it? That element will be actually in three dimensional. That element will be in the form of a circular ring you will get. Total complete circle you will get. And so now here I am writing the area of a small element. So area of small element is equal to dA is equal to so that I can write as 2 pi r into r d theta. So 2 pi r will give us a circumference into r d theta. So this width right. So this is dA is equal to now small r value by using this triangle we can write that small r value as where small r is equal to r sin theta we can write here where this capital R is a radius. So this is our capital R here. So this small r we can write as r sin theta we can write here. And so then this will be r sin theta into r d theta. Therefore this dA is equal to so 2 pi r square sin theta d theta. Right? So that is the area of our element. So now we need to integrate that area of that element there. So now the total area we can write as integral of 2 pi r square into sin. So do one thing here we are taking this as uh, this complete angle we are taking as theta. Then do one thing let us take these angles as phi and d phi here. So this angle I am taking as phi and d phi. So that finally the limits you can take from 0 to theta there. This is from phi to d phi. And so then this is from phi to d phi. And limits are now from 0 to theta we can consider. That means 0 means you will be here. And uh, that theta means uh, you will be here. That means from here to here in the reality. And so now let us integrate this expression now. 2 pi r square into Integral of sin theta is nothing but you will get minus cos phi and limits are from 0 to theta. And so its area we can write as 2 pi r square into 1 minus cos theta you will get. Right? Now let us write the solid angle definition. Solid angle is equal to this d omega is equal to a by r square. Right? So therefore this d omega is equal to r square will be cancelled 2 pi into 1 minus cos phi you can write here. So sorry cos theta. So that is the relation between solid angle and the plane angle. That means if the semi vortex angle is theta, uh, semi vortex angle of a cone is theta, then corresponding solid angle we can write as 2 pi into 1 minus cos theta. It's an important relation. If you remember that relation, then we can solve some lengthy problems very easily. In a single step, we can solve that. If you are using the integration, it will take nearly one phase calculation will be there, one full phase calculation. But whereas if you are using this formula, if you are using this relation between solid angle and the plane angle, so you can solve it in a single step. 
So regarding the solid angle now, you need to remember one basic definition like dA by R square is a solid angle. And for the complete solid angle of any object, any closed object will be equal to 4 pi. And this is the relation between solid angle and the semi vortex angle we can write here. So that means theta is the semi vortex angle of the cone. Then if theta is the semi vortex angle of the cone, then angle subtended by the cone we can write as that uh, 2 pi into 1 minus cos theta we can write. So that is the important relation you need, to re you need to remember here. So now let us see one problem based on this. So now write this problem, a charge Q, a point charge Q is placed on the axis of a disc, he is placed on the axis of a circular disc of radius r, axis of a circular disc of radius r at a distance, at a distance r from its center at a distance r from its center as shown. Then find, find flux passing through the disk. Find the flux passing through the disk. So in general, uh, with the knowledge up to now, uh, what we know, if you want to calculate this one, the general procedure what we can do is, we take a small element and then integration. That means, this is a complete disk for example, then here I am taking a small element. The general procedure I am taking, I am explaining here. We take a small element like this and due to this charge here, So it will be uh, k q by x square here. So when it is k q by x square, we can take this value as uh, s that uh, flux we can write as d phi is equal to e two. The area of the element we need to write it as two pi r d r into cos theta. And the by substituting the value k q by x square into two pi r d r into cos theta. So cos theta also actually we need to write in terms of this r and uh, this expression but cos theta also we can write that expression as uh, like uh, capital R by x and finally by converting that x into in terms of r and x we need to integrate that one. That is the general processor. We don't know anything, any calculation, any formula or anything. So that is the general processor. It is a relatively lengthy calculation. Now I am using this, uh, this our plane angle and solid angle relation here. Right? And so now for that this I am this as I am just joining these lines here. These are we are extending here these lines. So that it forms like a cone. And so now this sign that I am taking as theta. So that theta we can define it as suppose if I write the tan theta or cos theta let us define from that. So cos theta is equal to I can write this as uh, 1 by that means r by root 2 r you get. So that is 1 by root cos theta by right. 
And so now here, finally what we are going to write it is, this point charge will produce some flux here, right? That flux will be a part of a, uh, that means that flux will be a, uh, associated with this sphere if I consider it here, right? With this whatever the radius is there, with that radius if I imagine a sphere. So then the flux of passing through that entire sphere will be Q by epsilon of the right? So in terms of solid angle if I want to answer, that flux will be passing through a solid angle of 4 pi, right? Because we are taking a complete sphere. So then uh, flux passing through the entire sphere will be 4 pi, uh, that means it is the corresponding sphere solid angle of 4 pi, we can say Q by epsilon naught, flux will be associated with the solid angle of 4 pi. Now we need the flux passing through this, this amount of solid angle, we know this solid angle here, right? So then I can write this as flux passing through the Flux through the 
this is equal to flux flux through the solid angle d omega got it so we need to calculate actually flux through the disc so that flux through the disc is nothing but equal to the flux through the solid angle and so that i can write this as flux through the disc we can write as this uh, flux per unit angle unit solid angle 4 pi epsilon r into d omega we need to write like our linear charge density or aerial charge density for example for taking so linear charge aerial charge density means charge per unit area into area of the small element we are writing here so similarly this is in terms of solid angle we are writing here in terms of solid angle means charge per unit uh, uh, unit solid angle into the required solid angle so then we can substitute this value there so i can write this as 4 pi epsilon r into 2 pi into 1 minus cos theta therefore so it is q by 2 epsilon r into 1 minus cos theta so it's an important formula now you need to remember this important formula here. so whenever such a type of problems are there now directly you can apply this formula so then no need of remembering any uh, uh, this calculation or integration method is not required just we can apply directly this formula here so that means there when the charge is placed at this point here now we are calculating the flux pass into this angular ring or circle disk we can consider q by q epsilon on d2 so that is uh, q by q epsilon on d2 1 minus cos theta we can write right so that uh, now for the cos theta value we can calculate by using this line so in this given problem the value we can write as 1 by root 2 so we can substitute that value here so this formula is very important formula you need to remember this formula here so flux passing in such a case q by q epsilon naught into 1 minus cos theta in many problems we use it such a similar to this many problems will be there so we can use that formula now so in this finally we can write in this calculation here so finally we can write here this flux will be equal to in this given problem this is so q by j from r into 1 minus 1 by root 2 we can write here got it so this is the final answer for this question here so this is the formula here we need to remember once again i am saying that this is an important formula so q by j from r into 1 minus cos theta that is the flux pass into the base of uh, so this uh, base of the board we can say or you can say this is a circular base That means the same question instead of this disk they may ask like this. A charge is placed at the a charge is placed at this vertex of this cone here. Then what is the flux passing to this uh, cone? What is the flux passing to the cone is nothing but our given uh, this problem only. You can answer this q by q epsilon r into 1 minus cos theta, where the theta is nothing but this angle, half vertex angle or semi vertex angle. So that means the same the question they may ask like this. Now here I am explaining simply this uh, this question now. So on this axis of the disk here, I am placing it to identical charges. At the same distance, say R and R. Then what is the net flux passing through this? Net flux passing through this disk here. So here simply can answer that net flux passing through the disk zero. Can you say reason? The flux due to this charge is given by that expression. You can write it as q by q epsilon r into one minus two uh, one minus cos theta into right. That flux will be along this direction, right? Because this is a positive charge, away from the positive charge, so towards right you will get it. And now flux due to this charge will be given by the same amount because the distance is same. And so then this flux will be along this direction. So if one is taken as positive, then other will become negative, right? So that the net flux will be zero you will get. So in this case, the net flux will be zero. Now for example, I am taking the situation like charge is negative and taking here on the same basic question 
this sine is plus q which is at a distance of far from the center and this sine minus q will be there this side is for radius r then at flux pass through the disk we need to write so now we are simply with this knowledge we can directly say that the flux of passing through this positive charge and here positive charge they are cancelling with each other because their flux will be opposite in direction but here the flux due to this positive charge will be from we can say from left to right and the flux due to this negative charge will be from right to uh, sorry that is also towards from left to right because it is a negative charge negative charge in the sense the electric field lines will be towards the charge so it is also crossing from left to right only and so both the flux are in same direction in the right plane so this net flux will be equal to flux due to the positive charge plus flux due to the negative charge and so we can write this as uh, this capital q by q epsilon not into 1 minus cos theta plus q by q epsilon not into 1 minus cos theta that means you can just multiply with the two here so q by epsilon not into 1 minus cos theta we can write so if for example in this uh, case that theta is given like this 45 degrees will get here so i can write this as q by epsilon not into 1 minus 1 by root 2 So that will be the uh, answer for this question. So if both are positive charges, net flux will be zero. If one is positive and other is negative, just we should multiply it with two because their flux will be added together. Now here, for example, I will give another problem based on this. So let us try to solve the question. This is cylindrical uh, surface here. So we are placing this a charge Q at the center. The charge point charge P is placed at the center of this cylindrical surface. This radius of this uh, base of the cylinder is r, and length is let us take it as two uh, r total length. So that this is r, this is also r. Right? Let me write that problem. A point charge Q is placed at the center of the cylindrical surface. So the cylinder at the center of the cylinder of radius r and length two r. Then find flux passing through the each plane surface. Each plane surface flux passing through the each plane surface of cylinder. And curved surface of the cylinder. And a curved surface of the cylinder. So try to solve that problem. Otherwise, I will explain in the next class. So similar, we can apply this formula. The formula that we by Q epsilon not equal to one minus cos theta. We can apply that. So try that question. Otherwise, I will explain in the next class.